What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, people I really admire um, for many reasons. And I'm really excited to introduce you to today's guest, Andy Hassong. And if you don't know him, you should. If you don't know his work, you should. Uh, EndorsedInfluence.com. You know, I was just, Andy, I was just on your site and reading through some of the, the guidelines you have and of the partner persuasion path. And I think in my mind, Everything in life is a relationship. You know, it comes down to relationship, whether it's personal, whether it's business, whether it's health. And so I consider you one of the masters of relationships. So um, one of the people I like look at and look to as a giver. Um, and so if is Inspired Insider, so I'll, I'll give Andy an official introduction. Other episodes you can check out. You know, Andy, I love to hear the challenge stories, the, some of the low points. Um, the Pipe Drive founder, one of the co-founders, Ermas, I interviewed him like six years ago, and he talked about that in the same year he had brain surgery, um, he got married, and he moved from Estonia to the United States, which was a tough year for him. And so he talked about that. And at the time, they had 10,000 uh, customers, and now they have over 100,000 customers. Um, so it's amazing to see what wow. they've done. Um, if this episode is brought to you by, and the, all the work behind the scenes is funded by Rise25, which I co-founded with John Corcoran, and we help businesses launch and run their podcasts. So it makes sure they get to talk to their best relationships and give to their best relationships through a medium like podcasting. So if you have questions about it, go to rise25.com, check out more. And there's more of an inspiration behind it, which is a legacy piece, Andy, which is like, I consider when I have you on, we're leaving a legacy for you and for me. And so my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor, he's kind of the motivation behind us. If you go to the about page on Inspired Insider, it is an interview with the Holocaust, Holocaust Foundation and my grandfather. And that's kind of the inspiration behind why I think podcasting is so important. So rise25.com. But today's guest, um, and shout out to... Like biggest givers, I am my who I consider in the universe to me. Ian Garlic, Lee Richter, Larry Benet, Michael Roderick, and today Andy has song, highly respected authority on the topics of online joint ventures, creating endorsed influence for his students and agency clients since 2005. You know, a pioneer. I mean, I don't know when the internet came about, but he's been doing it for a long time. Um, he's been in the trenches, connecting, collaborating with hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs, marketers resulting in millions of dollars in profits for his clients, um, high converting webinars, launches, affiliate opportunities. He's the co-founder of Webinar Con with Ron Douglas, who I've had on. I think I had Ron on, Andy, maybe, I don't even know, like seven years ago or something. Should have, oh, him, yeah. back, have him back on and Onyx Singal, right? And, um, you know, Andy's proven systems help experts, authors, speakers, you know, speakers, coaches, all of them own influence by teaming up with other like-minded experts. And you can go to endorsedinfluence.com. Andy, thanks for being with me. Right on, man. Jeremy, I appreciate you having me on here. And, uh, you know, first of all, thanks for the kind words. Um, I would have to throw that back at you. You're one of those really kind individuals too. I've met over, the, you know, through my years in the online marketing space, going to live events. And I remember us sitting down for probably a couple of hours at TNC totally. a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, uh, have a good conversation and and all that. So it's it's great. To be I should on. have a criteria, Andy. Only Cubs fans are allowed on the podcast. That's right. So. I should have worn my Cubs. <laughs> I gotta have a Cubs hat somewhere. I've got a Cubs <laughs> coffee mug over here. If that counts. If we're when we're when we're out of like social distancing and back to games, we'll go to Wrigley Field. But yeah, um, talk about how did webinar come con come to fruition? Well, that actually. For me, it, it started about a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, um, because I started experimenting by putting people together in virtual groups to uh, to collaborate about their JV deals with webinars and helping them come together, people who have webinars come together, mastermind and so on. And then ongoing, um, I saw where Onik had a guest on where he was 
uh, had somebody at his Learn Center uh, presenting. I think it was Ty Cohen. That's who it was. Ty Cohen had his Kindle Cash Flow event there. And I reached out to him asking, you know, initially it was about finding out if what it would take to get his Learn Center to do a live event based around what I was already doing. And at the same time, he responded to me and said, hey, uh, Ron Douglas is also interested in our this event for the same kind of reason. You guys should chat. And so Ron and I got together, talked about it. Did you know Ron before then? Oh, or yeah. You yeah, didn't. Ron and I have been friends for probably seven, eight years online, just, uh, you know, meeting at live events such as, you know, like I did with you and yeah. you know, done some JV deals together and so on. And um, and so we agreed to partner and we thought we would talk to Onik to find out what it would take. And then after some back and forth, Onik uh, brought up the idea and we had considered it too. Hey, why don't the three of us partner on this? And so we decided let's go for it. And we decided to book um the dates of March 6th through the 8th of this year, which we're very fortunate we didn't book for after that because that from our everything mind, shut down right yeah, after that. Yeah. Uh, for you just made it. Wow. Yeah. For all I know, we're pretty sure we were the last uh, live marketing event. I think that I think there was another one night, one evening event uh, that went on like that next week. But I think that was about it. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's that's how it got started, and and uh, we're still partnering together on some other things related to the WebinarCom brand. So, yeah. So what that what does that look like now? So it goes from live event, but people can still get online learning um, and and you know distance learning, right? You mean with what we're doing? Yeah, with what you're doing. Yeah. Well, actually, we are going to be doing something soon. I'm not supposed to say anything yet, but right. we will be releasing. Well, since this is live, don't say anything. Yeah. If this was pre <laughs> if it was recorded for later, I'd be right. like, don't worry, we'll perfect. release it like in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But we're about to announce something else that uh, that we're releasing that I think will be a big hit as well. And it will allow a lot more people to, to take part in that because the original webinar con event was held to 100 people and it was a tight fit. And we originally only planned on having, I think it was 30, 35 people. Mm. I think it was 35 people we planned on. And then we bumped it to 50 and the demand was there. And we had the room and Onik actually sent a video to uh, Ron and myself. It's funny. We have this three-way Facebook messenger chat we've had going since like late November or something like that, maybe December. And um, having this conversation, he sent us a video showing his, the Learn Center where he's like, hey man, uh, hey guys, I rearranged the tables. I think we have room for some more. And um, because there were just a lot of people that wanted to go. Um, and so we were able to get a hundred people in there. And, and it, like I said, it's a little bit of a tight fit, but it was, I think it was just right. It, what was good, Andy, that came out of that? What was maybe some of the content or some of the things that people were talking about that was powerful for people? What was the feedback? Well, I can tell you one thing we did. We uh, put people together to, it's kind of like speed dating. We put them together one-on-one -on -one and timed it, you know, and had them moving. We had two different rooms that we had that going on with rows of tables and people just move, move, move. And uh, so that was a big hit. We did that on day one and uh, we would have liked to have gotten that in a couple more times over the weekend, but we had so many speakers set to present that we just had to keep it rolling. And, um, but some of the other things content wise, I mean, we just had people, well, Onik for one, um, he uh, shared, you know, how he won a launch. I think it was a $12 million launch or something. He was number one on that earlier this year. So he talked about everything he did, all the you know, sophisticated mm. systems he had in place. Had a lot of different high level speakers, mm -hmm. but I think the biggest benefit to it all it was that after day one, we had so many people. And by the way, I know I had no idea we we're going to be talking about webinar con on this. And so just for anyone listening, this wasn't set up, a setup for to no. sell all you guys on what we did. But I just no. to answer your question, um, after day one, we were being told that this was a lot of them said it was the best, their favorite event they've been to mm. because not because of the content so much, even though a lot of them said they love the content it was because of the purpose that we had, which was to bring people together just like you would at a, at a regular live event where people go to, you know, a lot of them go to make new connections to hopefully do some J JV deals and such. 
This was set up for that, to be able to come together with your webinar. Not everyone had a webinar, but I would say 80% of them did. And others were service providers related to webinars. And so what they were excited about was the fact that they already were doing deals the first day just from hanging out, you know, just being in the room, being introduced in the speed deal thing that we did, as well as uh, just, you know, during lunch and so on. And we had a contest to see who do the most deals and things like that. It just made a lot of fun. And, and people were just excited about that. So that was the that was the best thing for me. Was that so it was like it was kind of a combination, it sounds like, Andy, of um, bringing what converts in a launch and a webinar to how do you form these joint venture partnerships as well? And that's your like the ultimate superpower comes in. Was there before we go to that, your superpower, was there anything that Anik mentioned well, like out of the twelve million dollar launch that sticks out as something, oh, this this piece, don't miss this piece in your in your launch? You know, I to be honest with you, I can't remember specific details about it. And as one of the the co-founders, I was going in yeah, the room. I figured to make sure things were going well. Well, if anyone is watching this and you were there, please put in the chat <laughs> what yeah. Big thing you got out of that Onyx talk. Um, that'd be that'd be cool. So when approaching partners, joint venture partners, uh -huh. okay, you have what's called this partner persuasion path. All right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Well, you know, really the first half of that is more about you know getting prepared and and how to approach them and everything. But yes, um, but sharpening the saw. What's that? Sharpening the saw. Yeah. Well. Well. First of all, if it, I've seen so many times where somebody has a webinar, uh, not so much a launch. Usually when someone has a launch, they're pretty prepared with what the details are before they start reaching out to people. But because I've been focusing on webinars exclusively for the last five plus years, I think it is. Um, what I found is a lot of guys who have new webinars are solid and everything. They want to go, go, go to try to get partners and they don't really have their ducks in a row yet. And so, so the first thing I always um, advise people to do is prepare and that's to prepare their, uh, the, the details of their JV opportunity, getting down certain information. And I, and it doesn't mean you have to have a, a real fancy JV page or anything like that. Just getting it down in a document. What, uh, it could be a Google document. Mm -hmm. I like to use Evernote documents just because they look a little bit better. They look like web page a lot of times and just get the basic details down and then prepare your contact list, the people that you really want to reach out to. And we don't have time for, for this during this call, obviously, but I have a whole process of being able to pinpoint your, your low hanging fruit contacts who you may not already be thinking about. Uh, just one idea there is a lot of people have been told, Hey, when you release your course about, I don't know, uh, YouTube traffic or whatever it is, uh, let me know. I'll endorse it to my people or I'll promote it. Right. And um, people like that, people you met at live events, people who uh, you've uh, promoted in the past as an affiliate yourself and just brainstorm all these people, you know, make a list of who these people are. And then after that, prepare the approach uh, that that you send to them. And it's very simple, keeping it short and sweet, making it all about them on the front end just to get a response to see if there's any interest in collaborating at all. And it's not even about, Hey, will you promote this for me? It's about, Hey, you know, I've got this idea, but I don't even know if you're endorsing anything. And, that, and that's important too. I always use the word endorse, not promote. And that's something else we can talk about if you want, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, but we, but I'll get to that. But, um, but that's pretty much it. You know, you make it all about the other person. Um, and they're not dumb. They know that if you're reaching out to them out of the blue, especially if they haven't heard from you in a while, you know, if you know, what do you want know each other? Right. Yeah. You know that they probably got something they're, they're wanting to, to uh, do for themselves. And so you make it something about them totally authentic, authentically where you're making it about, you know, um, are, are you even looking to endorse things to, to, to your audience? to the people that are trusting you. And if so, say, well, I've got an idea that might, you know, might be a fit and I'll leave it up to you to decide. And, and, and that's when you get in that conversation and then just see what happens. And of course there's more to it than all that, but yeah, that's kind of my short. Answer. I mean, people can check out endorsedinfluence.com and you have, uh, if you check it out, you can actually download a free PDF 
um, which is partner persuasion path. So if you want the full details, I mean, we don't have time right now to go through all of them. You can check that out on his website um, and we'll hit on some different topics. But you mentioned endorse, not promote. How did you come to that verbiage? Yeah, well, I think it probably started because I, I really can't remember when or how I came up with using the term endorse traffic is really what I started using. And it was back mm. when I was working with Todd Brown uh, as his JV director and he and I are still good friends. And uh, one of my big influences in this industry, by the way, um, and we both talk and I think, well, OK, so that that does um, explain how I came up with it, because he's a big proponent on coming up with special terminology for the thing that you do and in, in a way that that is different but makes a lot of sense to your target market. And that, and so what I came up with r regarding endorsed traffic is that, that it's important to understand that when you're looking for someone to promote or to endorse your webinar, your product launch or evergreen affiliate offer to their audience, it's important to understand that those people on the other end trust that partner that you would be working with. And, and if that partner does, does endorse you to, to them, that's what what this is. It's an endorsement. They are fully endorsing you to their audience, and so it's that's why you want to make it all about the potential partner you're reaching out to. Because if you reach out to them from an angle of, hey, what is it your people want? You know, what is it they respond to the most? And I just you know would like to find out if what I have is something that might be a fit for them. And, and that's another thing too. never go to them and say, Hey, I've got something that's a perfect fit for your list because, and that's another topic we can get into. Then well. they're like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. But I do want to talk about two big things on okay. that topic, which you take me there, right? Mistakes, big mistakes people make when reaching out and also the metrics. Cause you say you got to be prepared. So let's start with the metrics for a second. What metrics should people know? I mean, they're not, I'm not saying they're leading with the metrics, right? Cause right. at a minimum, you just want to know, are you even promoting anything to start yeah. the conversation? But when you, you know, further along the line, you need to have be prepared. So what metrics should people know? Like, what do you look for? Someone, hey, Andy, I have a webinar. You're like, okay, boom. I already like you. I trust you. We're going to endorse this thing. Probably, maybe. What are the mm -hmm. metrics? What do you look for? Sure. Well, first of all, um, even before the metrics, the topic and what the topic is about, you know, is it something that, in and of itself is going to be interesting to, to the audience. Like in my case, you know, I've matched people up, you know, with offers. And so when I see an offer, a lot of times I can tell if it's going to be a home run in the, like the webinar JV uh, circuit or whatever, right. Just by the topic alone. But then as far as metrics go, you know, one myth is that you have to have cold traffic conversions before you take a webinar, for instance, out into the JV space. It's just not true. It just isn't. I mean, I've seen it happen so many times where people have not spent a dime on on paid ads before doing that. And I'm not saying that it's not ideal to do that. I'm just saying it's not. Yeah, obviously, it may be ideal if you can do it. But yeah, yeah, not, yeah, yep. And so now with that said, if someone comes to me and says, hey, I've been running this on cold traffic for the last six months and it's just been doing great, you know, whatever those numbers are, you know, in terms of uh, EPCs and, and so on. I really haven't personally got into EPCs and, you know, and ROA, what is that? ROAS, uh, return on ad spend and uh, for paid ads and all that. I really don't even fully understand all that. All I understand is on the webinar side is that if, if it's hot and people are buying it and you've got a high um, conversion rate in terms of um, uh, commissions uh, like per attendee, like dollars per attendee, dollars per registrant, uh, things like that, that you can share with uh, potential partners, then um, that's kind of what you look at. And, and I guess just, you know, $100 per attendee in actual earned commissions, not just gross, is a pretty cool benchmark that if you've hit that, people take notice of that. Um, but then, of course, also, if you can let people know you've got a low refund rate, um, things like that. I mean, it's pretty simple. It really comes down to how hot the topic is, if it's a fit for the audience, if it's been converting internally or with other partners and so on. You know, What's another myth? Another myth is that you have to resip. I hate that term. Okay. People, uh, so many times 
over the years when I've had conversations with people who are really just starting out getting JV partners. Maybe they've got a webinar that's been going well internally and they've just really put it off. I find that a lot of times people put it off because they're scared. <laughs> they're scared of getting asked the question, will you reset for me? Will you do a reciprocal program? Oh, got it. Will you promote for me? And, and it's sad because what's true is that if your opportunity is good enough, if it's hot and a good fit for other people's audiences, there are people out there, there are uh, JV partners who will promote you without you having to promote them back in return. Right. And it really just start, starts with getting one partner who believes in you, which goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, your low hanging fruit. If you can just get one or two partners who believe in you enough to, to endorse you to their audience. Then you just take the results of that webinar and hopefully a JV testimonial or two from that partner. Um, and leverage that to reach out to other people uh, to see if they'd be a fit. Um, what are some mistakes people make when reaching out? Well, um, you know, just reaching out and saying, hey, I've got this webinar or I've got this offer. Will you promote it? Hey, we, is this something that you or this is this would be a perfect fit for your list? Like we already said, um, reaching out, making it all about yourself. Right. And not I'm not saying that you have to reach out and warm them up for a while before you ever bring something up because everyone's different. Um, I think if someone you're reaching out to, you know, just wants to get to the point, there's nothing wrong with, yeah. Hey, you know, how's it going? Um, uh, haven't chatted in a while. Hope everything's going well. Just wanted to let you know, I understand you, you've been endorsing different webinars lately. I just wondered if you'd be open to checking the one, uh, checking out the one that I just uh, released. Um, it's about X, Y, and Z, not giving a link. Don't give a JV page link yet. Uh, don't start throwing out a bunch of stats. I mean, I think it's okay to say it's converted really well, or maybe you throw in a number, but keep it very short and sweet. Yeah. And it's kind of like a first date, right? It's like, you're not like, Hey, um, do you want kids? Like how many, I mean, maybe you do maybe <laughs> you hit, you have a connection, but you don't want to like jump the gun too, too far in advance with, with right. some of those. Right. Yep. Absolutely. And, um, I say you should always take a two to three step approach when you do reach out to people, you know, make that first approach. And I, my favorite way of reaching out is via Facebook Messenger. These days, it seems like everyone's on Facebook. And when I do it, I do it from one of those little tabs at the bottom, like everyone uses probably on their laptop. And, uh, and I try to keep it to two short little sentences or maybe three, two little paragraphs or something like that. Really short and sweet that just, you know, gets their interest, um, lets them know I'm thinking about them and, and I have an idea to uh, run by them if, if they're open to it. Or if it's somebody that I, you know, I've done a lot of deals with, a lot of times I'll just kind of get right, cut right to the chase, but I still do it respectfully and um, just to get them engaged in a conversation and see where that leads. So one of my favorite people also, um, Andy, is uh, Caleb O'Dowd. And yeah. you've done work with Caleb. Talk about how you get, how you both connected and then what you ended up doing together. Well, Caleb was introduced to me about four years ago, maybe, and um, started having a conversation with him about a webinar he had at the time. And when I found out that he was one of Gary Halbert's original protégés or original, I think his protégé, he lived with him for like yeah. two years along yeah. with his business partner, Sam. Markowitz, right? Yep. I know both of them. Yeah. Yep. And they've done millions over the years in various industries. And so again, it was, it's kind of like uh, back in the day when I started not to name drop or anything, but I was John Reese's affiliate manager back in the day for anyone watching this, who remembers him, uh, you know, in the internet marketing space. Um, when I first met him and found out what he had accomplished before he was even teaching this stuff, that made me realize I needed to pay attention to him and, and, uh, get to know him better. And that's the same thing with Caleb, with Caleb and those guys, very highly ethical, uh, highly ethical, uh, business owners, people in general. And then the offers that they create are, are winners. And so, yeah, that's how I met him. And, and we just decided, or we, I started being his uh, JV director for a webinar and then, uh, for another webinar after that. And I think I've done it 
done that with him for about so four talk, years. Tell people what that means, JV director, because you okay. also have an agency side of your business. Yep. And, and maybe just give people a brief background of how that works. Sure. Now, um, okay, so you have, I, I think I need to preface it by saying there's a lot of confusion and it depends on who you ask. There's, right. you have JV brokers and then you have affiliate managers, you have JV managers uh, and so on. And um, it's important to understand that a JV broker, for instance, is someone who typically you know, will connect two people together for a promo and uh, and then they'll get a percentage of that by making the connection and, you know, hopefully helping them, you know, get it on the calendar and help facilitate the whole campaign, which is what I do when I broker deals. Cause I also do that. But, um, but then you have a, an affiliate manager who it, it, an affiliate manager could be the same as a JV manager. I call it, you know, partner director, JV director, whatever. It's just a positioning thing really. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but an affiliate manager or JV director, whatever you want to call it, is somebody who isn't just recruiting affiliates and and connecting them and then getting a cut for the deals that, that he or she puts together. He's actually managing or directing the entire campaign from front to back. You know, the, the guy in the, the middleman who's uh, or woman who's facilitating the deal, uh, making sure both sides have what they need. And I'll tell you this, man. Um, JV directors, a lot of people don't understand all the work that goes on behind the scenes. That sounds like a terrible job. <laughs> it sounds, I mean, not in a it negative way. Be. It just means a lot of work. It seems it, like a lot of work. Yeah, it can be at times. Like, hmm, do you want to be the JV broker? I'll just connect it. I'll step away. I mean, not yeah. as that easy because you spend decades building relationships and building trust. So right. it's not like easy, but that in addition to the JV director, sign me up just for the JV broker. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Now the JV director side, the good thing is that um, a lot of times compensation is better um, mm -hmm. and there you get basically a cut of everybody, all the deals that come through because you're helping manage everything, whether you recruited them or not sometimes. It just depends on who the client yeah. is that you're working with. So this with Caleb, you were directing everything in addition to making introductions. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and I tell you what I was going to say about it being a, a tough uh, gig. Sometimes the, the biggest challenge is, is when you have two personalities and two different ways of doing things, this client, the client and the partner or whatever, and both sides like to do business a certain way, obviously. Mm. And sometimes they just mesh and they get along great and they're very, both sides are cooperative. And then other times, they, this guy's bashing this guy <laughs> all the way through the campaign really, or vice versa. Like behind the scenes. Yeah. And you've okay. got to be the one to kind of juggle that. Man. What would be an example of a bashing? You have to name names, of course, but like yeah. what did people conflict about? What was the, well, I think, okay. So you, had, you were, we were talking before we started recording about stories and I yeah. won't say names, but I remember it's probably, it was probably back in 2012 or 13 yeah, it was quite a while ago when I put together a deal and both sides, you know, like, and we can talk about what I do to rectify this now just through experience, but right. here in just a few minutes. But um, I remember making the introduction and being the one to facilitate the whole thing all the way through. And this guy, I'm getting his email swipes, sending him to this guy and this guy to his and making sure everyone's got their links and so on. And, but neither one of them, they hadn't met. They hadn't had a conversation at all. Everything was through me. And I just had a feeling something was going to go haywire. Well, Why? what ended up happening was they promoted each other because the other one agreed to promote for them, that reset thing. You know, all they cared about was that they had someone on the calendar that would also reset for them, reciprocate. And, uh, and so when they got them on the calendar, one guy promoted one week, one guy promoted the other, this guy, who was being promoted this week, the other guy didn't push very hard. He's pushing just enough to get people on the webinar. You know, to I, I don't I don't know the to get credit to get credit for doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Just to say that he did it, right? Well, this guy is upset because this guy's hardly sending any traffic, right? And um, and so the next week, same thing happens. <laughs> that dude didn't send much traffic to him. And then this guy's complaining. And and they were like upset with one another. And I tried to tell both parties early on that, Hey, um, you guys should really get on a call together. 
you know, let, let me get on there. Oh, no, I don't have time for that. You know, you handle it. And and so I remember that fizzled out big time. I think I made two hundred dollars on that um, out of all that time, which is a is a, a strikeout, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you so know? what would you do today to rectify it? Today, I, what I always encourage my clients to do, especially my JV management, JV director clients, is to do what I call a 15 minute brainstorm call. And and the way that works, it's like magic, really, if you think about it, because right after the webinar deal gets booked, you know, whether it's a single deal or a cross promotion, um, once it gets on the calendar, next thing I say is, hey, you know, now why don't we go ahead and schedule a time for you guys to jump on a quick 15 minute call to just to discuss the positioning of the offer, make sure we're all on the same page and we answer any questions. And I've never, I mean, you get some pushback sometimes, you know, because people are very busy, but for the most part, you know, they're willing 15 to. 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes, knowing that it's probably going to be 30 minutes or so, right? Sometimes it's gone as far as an hour. And here's the magic. The reason I really get them on there um, is because when they get on there, a lot of times all they do is they, they find out they got a commonality. Like you and I are big Cub fans. They find out, they start building rapport. Uh, you know, they find out what commonality they have. And then they're like, okay, tell me more about what this webinar is about. And, you know, what can I do to really, you know, uh, push across a lot of sales? And it starts creating buzz during that call to a point a lot of times where by the time they get off the call, it's like uh, I'm 100 percent all in on pushing uh, for th for this promotion. And so that's when they really go really well. And if you don't mind me adding to this, you uh, when we were talking about stories before we got on here. Yeah. Uh, there was a time I mentioned Todd Brown's name already. Um, I had introduced him to two different people. One was Ryan Levesque, who, you know, the founder of Ask. I Ask love Ryan. Yeah. Right. And then I also um, uh, got Todd and Ryan Lee on a, on a call together, which I think they already knew each other. But in both instances, when they got on the call as the middleman, I just um, muted myself and let them talk until they had a question for me or whatever, or if I needed to jump in. And all it was is both sides just giving each other love about loving what he, the other person was doing online. And then they jumped into the JV conversation and those promos went off without a hitch. Mm. They, were, they were awesome. And so uh, that's, you know, just an example of what can happen when you take the time to do that versus just letting the JV guy or JV gal handle all the details and, and try to get by with do, doing it without talking to anybody. So, so Andy, yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's huge um, in your years experience. Now, back to the Caleb O'Dowd. I know I interrupted you just to clarify the JV director thing, but so you're, you're JV directing, Caleb. What are some of the components you make sure are there? Talk about the launch a little bit. Yeah, so with him right now, um, he's uh, about to release another webinar or two, actually. And, and when... I feel like he's always releasing something. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Well, when... When that's the case, the idea is, again, like I was saying before, my it's my job to get really clear and prepared on what the details are of that JV opportunity. And like I said, I typically will put it on an Evernote document and um, and I put as much ammo on that document as, as I can to, to limit the questions. You know, what if I put it in front of someone, they've got everything they need right there. And a lot of times people say, yeah, I'm in, you know, I, I can do it next week or two weeks from now or something. And so when when that happens, I get on the calendar, uh, I make make introductions. I'm just kind of going through I'm not going through everything I do, but the basics are, you know, get it on the calendar, get them to agree to that 15 minute brainstorm call. Yep. So that's on the calendar. Once that's on the calendar, um, I let them know, you know, give me a few days. Um, we'll work up a document that we will present to you that that gives you everything you need. Uh, and, and we'll have some questions for you uh, regarding. And if Kayla gives you swipe, you better study that swipe. Like it's your yeah. job because yeah. one of the best copywriters. Yeah, that absolutely. Yeah. He's just the email copy alone that, that he uses mm -hmm. in his promotions are, you know, crazy it's a masterclass. Yeah. And he doesn't personally write all of that stuff anymore but he's trained these copywriters and he's, he's written his own copy for years. Now, some of his copies still writes, but you know, the ones that he uh, has, you know, outsourced or whatever are outsourced to people he's personally trained and, and know mm -hmm. his style. Yep. So what happened on the other side? 
I don't know if you want to talk about the the you know one Caleb launch or webinar that was successful. What happened? Well, I mean, I'll just uh, bring up the initial one that he did with a partner, and I probably shouldn't say names because you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. but there's a, a good friend of mine that I've done a lot of deals with over the years who was the initial partner for Caleb's high profit Facebook group mm-hmm. webinar, which is actually being retired now. Just so you know, it's it's no longer uh, a thing in on the JV circuit right now. Um, nothing bad, just that it was uh, two, three years in the making and uh, uh, decided to do some other promos. But uh, this uh, partner of ours, a good friend of mine, endorsed it. And, and just it was really cool because I just reached out to him in a way that uh, I was just like, this is something that I think could be the next big webinar on the circuit. And I've said that before and really meant that with different webinars um, that I really think are going to blow up and they usually do. Right. And this one definitely didn't um, uh, disappoint. And I I remember this, this partner did over 200,000 in sales on that first webinar. And here's the magic to that. And the reason I bring that example up is that when that happens, and I tell people this too, that when you get that first webinar done, especially in the internet marketing slash, you know, uh, make money online space, once you get that out there, more partners are out there watching, you know, that yeah. they have registered or maybe they have just heard about it and, and they see it being promoted by somebody. And, and then they start reaching out asking, Hey, how did that webinar do? They might reach out to me. They might reach out to, to you if you have a webinar doing right. that, whatever. And that's where you can kind of snowball it. So it's not just about, you know, going out and recruit, 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 recruit. You still do that. You still go out there and approach these potential partners, but you also have people coming to you, you know, asking about it as well. So, you know, Andy, there's two last questions. You'll let me know if you don't have time for them. One is I wanted to, for you to share a few things of motivating people to promote. Like you said, even if you have them on the calendar, even if they agree to do it, actually motivating them to continue to promote more. And the yeah. second is I wanted to just tell your backstory. You have a really interesting backstory of where you started. Okay. okay. Yeah. And how you, when you first got into kind of this online marketing world, um, I think you were, what was your job at the time? Uh, post office clerk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how that, what was the transition? So um, I don't know which one you want to Attack I first. You. I can talk about whatever you want me to talk about, man. You know, it's, it's talk about motivating people to promote first, and then I want you okay. to tell just a brief backstory because I know okay. you have to hop on another call. But um, no. talk about motivating people to promote because okay. there's so many steps up to that point. There's so many steps that, yeah. that happen. Like, okay, we're going to say yes, but now they yeah. need to actually start sending and actually – because everyone's busy, even though they have the best of intentions – yeah. Andy, right. They still need that push. People are busy. So well, first of all, this is why I got out of the product launch game. Like I stopped being a, an affiliate manager for product launches because I'd come in, come on as a, as a, uh, uh, I don't know, a product launch JV manager or whatever for different launches. And, and even though it was enjoyable to a certain extent because of the people I was working with, the hours and the time spent chasing people down, getting people committed to promote a, uh, a product launch and then having to follow up, making sure they're going to promote and then keeping them motivated just was just exhausting. Now with webinars, it's a little bit different. Um, when you're working with one partner at a time and you've got a week set aside for a specific partner, then it's just about communication at that point. Mm. It's uh, obviously getting them what they need in plenty of time of time. Um, you know, just being that voice in between or, or just watching the conversation that's going on, whether it's in Skype or Facebook Messenger, reaching out, asking if they have everything they need, making sure all the links are working, stuff like that, um, which you don't have to do yourself. You can have someone else on your team do that, the technical stuff. But but, but then as you're getting closer to the promo, um, reminding them, you know, what their webinar um, panelist link is or their go-to webinar panelist link is, and then once they start promoting, updating them as soon as possible as sales come in, you know, how those sales look. Hopefully they've gone really well. 
and when they have, you let them know right away, hey, great job. You're off to a great start. Uh, we still have tonight's encore to go uh, before we even get to the replays tomorrow, as an example, mm -hmm. right? Excuse me. And then the next morning, what I like to do is see where we're at sales wise and, you know, update them on the sales numbers, make sure they have the replay link. Uh, I know in Caleb's case, the link that was used to promote the actual webinar is the exact same link to use for the replay. So there's no excuse to be waiting on a, a replay link to be waiting uh, to be created for you. And so I will just remind them, Hey, you know, you have 23 sales so far off to a great start, by the way, here, as a reminder, it's the same link you used. Here it is again. Uh, go ahead and send that out. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, here's your swipes again, or I usually don't send the swipes again because they're all in one document. I just remind them, you know, to uh, you know, just pull from the swipes and to, to edit, edit them in their voice and so on. And so I'll do that on a daily basis to update them on sales, how that's going, just asking everything's okay reminding them of certain things like a payment plan is is starting on Saturday or Sunday morning. Um, the the uh, deal's closing Sunday night. So be sure on Sunday, really, you know, check out those emails or quite a few emails to send on that day. Things like that. Just staying in communication. It sounds like communication and reinforcement are the two keys yeah. to just continuing to make sure people are doing what they need to be doing, even though they're super busy. Um yeah. Andy, talk about the where you started, like you said, the post office clerk and how you got into this. Yeah, well, um, and, and it's not that uh, I like talking about myself because I do not like talking about myself. I do love telling this story because it's I think it can inspire some people who maybe are struggling or uh, whatever. So for me, what I was doing, like I, I was working as a post office clerk. I was a college dropout got out of school to uh, help raise a little boy who I ended up adopting uh, when he was five. Hmm. And uh, anyway, that, so the short, short version is that um, fast forward, I was working. Is that why Andy, is that why you dropped out at the time? Yeah, or, well, was, or was that just yeah, happened later? Yeah. I, I dropped out because of the fact I was staying home a lot to help take care of him and, hmm. and my GPA was dropping. So I had a full ride RO, ROTC scholarship that would have paid for all my, bachelor's and graduate school. And because my GPA was dropping, I decided to uh, go ahead and drop out of school that semester, intending to go back that next semester. And I never did. So, but that's cool. It all I just don't want to breeze over. That's, I mean, think of at the time someone's in college helping to helping take care of a child ends up adopting them. That's not like a normal story, right? Like it doesn't happen to most people. So I'm really yeah. curious of maybe sharing a couple bits from that. It was just tough, man. It, it was tough because, uh, you know, um, and I tell you what, I'm good friends with with his mom to this day. We we never did make it. We had another son together when we were um, when we were engaged and uh, she's a great mom and, and has always been there for the kids. We were better off not being together. We were so young. And um, but it was tough because I was, you know, on a track like this. I thought going through college, I played one year of baseball quit because I just knew I wasn't going anywhere with that and uh, just got that ROTC scholarship by joining the Army, uh, National Guard and um, and all that. And then when I dropped out, you know, it was a punch in the gut. And then I struggled for, for a few years before I got that that post office job. But during that post office job is when I still just kept listening to audios while I worked, while everyone was making fun of me <laughs> for it. And um because what's the culture there to yeah. to yeah yeah they were listening to um like talk radio and of course music and I, what I, were you listening to at the time i was listening to audios about uh mindset uh even real estate investing say personal development uh and i remember it was ron legrand's information marketing boot camp tapes yes mm. cassette tapes um and there was an audio in there about internet marketing and i think it was ken mccarthy yeah and um, and that led me to attending his first system seminar mm. in 2002, I think it was. And um, there were some amazing people there, right? Like Perry, wasn't Perry Marshall there? Like who else was was dude, that? Listen to this. Um, and it's been a long time, so I'm a little foggy on this. But the way I mm. remember this, yeah, is that Perry was sitting right next to me. We haven't remained like we we were friendly with each other, but we never did 
end up staying in touch. And that was one thing I wish we had. But we'll all go to the Cubs. I'm going to like ping Perry. Like we're all going to go to the Wrigley Field at some point. So yeah. yeah, yeah, you should. Yeah, I know he's up there too. But he was sitting right next to me. I believe it was when I think John Keel was on stage announced that um, something about Google AdWords was being released. I don't know if that was like April of 2000. No, you're right. Yeah. yeah. 2002. And I remember hearing Perry and his, and I go, oh man, like, and his eyes lit up or whatever. And I was just like, hmm, yeah, that, that is pretty cool. This guy is really excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> like the, you know, the, the king of Google AdWords or whatever. Yep. And so yep. that's, that's the cool stuff that happens, you know, when you go to these events and stuff and, and a lot of memories. So yeah, there were people like uh, Perry, uh, Yannick Silver, uh, John Keel, who a lot of people don't know of, but uh, was a mentor of mine. He actually helped me quit the post office. Anyway, mm -hmm. a lot of different people. And so, uh, but to kind of finish this story about where I began, because I was listening to those audios and I was sick of my job, I wanted something better for myself. I decided to call in sick to go to that first system seminar mm. on a weekend. Where and, was it? Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Got it. Yeah. And because, and get this, I, I live at the time uh, 40 minutes Northeast of Indianapolis. And I was about 30 miles away headed to Cincinnati. And I could only go because I didn't have the money for a plane ticket. If it had been somewhere further away, it was driving distance. And I got about 20 or 30 minutes away, pulled into a parking lot and because I felt overwhelmed, I thought, man, I'm in over my head. I'm going back home. But a voice hit me, said, dude, you just need to keep on going. Hmm. And so I did. And, and then because of that, I eventually just got really sucked into the whole Internet marketing game, met John Reese at the next event and the rest is history. You know, I love that. And hopefully, Andy, someone listens to this and gives them the motivation to keep going, like if they're a place where uh, you know, I just, I'm not ready for this. You know, I was talking to Cameron Harold um, earlier today and his CEO Alliance, and he was saying they're in a room full of CEO to be in his group. The company has to be doing $5 million or more. Most of them are doing $20 million. Okay. The, um, the CEO in there goes, said, I feel like a fraud. Yeah. And, and then at a break, he, mm -hmm. goes, he told Cameron, like, I don't know if this is right for me. I feel like a fraud. Like all these people are impressive. I shouldn't be here. <laughs> and he, and he said, do you mind if I share that story with people when they went back from lunch and he goes to the group, he goes, before I tell you the story, who in here feels like a fraud? <laughs> Every single person raised their hand. Yeah. Every single person raised their hand, which is like, no matter where you're at. Dude, I, during you know this I mean? call right now, it's like, you know, um, over the years when I've done these calls, I've gotten, I, I've got to a point where I just kind of say what comes to mind and I just go with it. Right. But there's always that thought before someone asks a question, I'm like, man, I hope I know the answer to this. I, I, I hope, I hope they don't figure out that I don't have all my <laughs> you know, stuff together all the time, you know? Yeah. So. Which is the truth for everyone. That's, that's my yeah. point. So I totally appreciate you sharing that Where, yeah. wherever someone's at, you know, they're just, that's yeah. what people are thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. So yep. um, let's point people towards your site, endorsedinfluence.com. Check it out. Where else should we point people towards online? And I, first of all, I just thank you. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Where else should we point people towards? Sure. Well, I appreciate that. Um, well, first of all, endorsedinfluence.com is my main web website. And to be quite honest with you, I've hardly used the site at all uh, the last couple of years. It's there as a placeholder pretty much for anyone who might you know, stumble upon me. Right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you can, um, go to, I've got a Facebook group that hmm. I am revamping and got it. It's called connecting the dot coms got uh, it. because that's what I do. Right. And it's connecting the dot coms dot com. If you just go to that <laughs> URL, it'll, nice. it'll take you there. And, um, and so that's something I'm ramping up. Um, and then, uh, the guys, like I said, uh, my partners with WebinarCon, Onyx and Gall and Ron Douglas and I are releasing some stuff. So if you ever go to WebinarCon.com, there's usually um, some sort of an opt-in form that lets you get on a waiting list or announcement yeah. list for any new events or offers that we might might have. Who should contact you, Andy? If they're listening to this, they're like, I want to work with Andy. Who's like a perfect fit for you? Sure. Well, if you're doing webinars, you need 
guidance on the JV side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, you know, anyone that's in this space, uh, you know, it's got a course that you're looking to get endorsed by other, by other uh, influencers and so on. Uh, you're looking, let's say you've got a list, you're an affiliate or JV partner. You're looking for webinars that you'd like to promote to your audience or there's that word again, endorse to your audience. Um, mm -hmm. People like that, you know, just reach out to me. You can also reach me on Facebook. Um, it's just Andy. It's uh, facebook.com slash Andy Hussong. And that's it. Andy, thank you again. Absolute pleasure. Really right appreciate on. you. Thanks, Jeremy. I love having uh, being a part of this. Love that you have me on here. And we got to do that Cubs game if we can ever get back Amen. to normalcy, right? <laughs> what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.